In the silent forests of Eastern Europe, a soldier could vanish, literally disappear, without stepping behind cover. Not because of shadows or tricks of the eye, but because of a fabric pattern so effective that it blurred the human form against trees, mud, and snow like nothing before it. It wasn't digital. It wasn't infrared-resistant paint. It was a Cold War camouflage developed in secrecy, tested in the harshest conditions, and so effective that it was classified for years after the Iron Curtain fell. Both sides of the Cold War had their own versions, but one pattern in particular, born in Soviet research labs and refined in Warsaw Pact field tests, was so advanced that NATO analysts didn't even know it existed until decades later. This isn't just a story about a uniform. It's about how science, survival and secrecy collided during the Cold War and how the lessons from that fabric still shape modern concealment and wilderness survival today. Camouflage became a battlefield science during the Cold War. After World War II, camouflage evolved from an artist's craft into a field of applied physics and psychology. Both NATO and the Warsaw Pact understood that modern warfare was increasingly fought from the air. A soldier's ability to blend into the terrain could mean the difference between survival and detection by aircraft or early reconnaissance cameras. In the 1950s, while Western armies were still relying on simple patterns like British DPM or USM 1948 frog skin, Soviet and East German scientists began experimenting with what they called optical disruption fabrics. They studied how light scattered off snow, bark and tundra moss, and how the human brain perceived outlines and contrast. Out of this research emerged the foundation of one of the most effective concealment patterns ever created, what would later become known in Western intelligence circles as KLMK camouflage. The KLMK pattern wasn't colourful or complex. It was a pale green-tan mesh of irregular webbing, kind of resembling a digital print, decades before computers could generate one. What really made it revolutionary was how it interacted with light. The fabric's micropattern created interference at distances beyond 30 metres, making the wearer appear as a natural part of the environment, not just in forests, but even against grassy tundra and open ground. During the Cold War, Soviet reconnaissance troops, Spetsnaz units and CBRN specialists wore this pattern during exercises that involved both human spotters and early infrared film. The results, well, they stunned observers. The suits could break up outlines under multiple lighting conditions, and under some early thermal optics they appeared colder than their surroundings due to the air-trapping mesh weave. That mesh wasn't just visual camouflage, it provided airflow and insulation. Soldiers operating in mosquito-infested swamps and humid river valleys found that it kept them cool while masking their heat signature. In an era when NATO was experimenting with bulky, chemical-laden camouflage, the Soviet KLMK design quietly achieved what Western armies would spend decades trying to replicate. The KLMK pattern and its successors, well, they were never widely issued to Soviet line troops. Instead, these uniforms were restricted to elite recon units and NBC, that's Nuclear Biological Chemical, forces who operated behind enemy lines or near sensitive installations. Even Warsaw Pact allies saw it sparingly. Czechoslovak and East German forces only received simplified derivatives for testing. 
The secrecy wasn't paranoia, it was tactical necessity. During the 1970s, NATO analysts began cataloguing Soviet uniforms and equipment through defectors and captured gear. Yet this particular camouflage, interestingly enough, remained absent from reports until the late 1980s. By the time it was declassified after the Soviet collapse, field trials had already proven it so effective that many post-Soviet states continued to use it well into the 2000s. Some units in modern Russia still deploy variations under the Ratnik gear system, now updated for near-infrared reduction. For decades, it was effectively a ghost uniform, photographed, misidentified, and whispered about in NATO intelligence circles. Its simplicity concealed its brilliance. What made this Cold War camouflage so effective wasn't just colour, it was contrast management. You know, modern camouflage often focuses on pattern complexity, but KLMK showed that micro-patterning, tiny variations that scatter light and distort outlines, is what actually fools the human eye at distance. You can apply the same principle today, even without military fabric. If you're creating field gear or hunting clothing, Layering materials of slightly different shades that break up light reflection is more effective than wearing solid colours. For example, wearing a thin mesh overlay in a lighter tone than your base layer can create the same disruptive visual effect that KLMK used. The small air gap reduces sheen, minimises body outline, and even helps regulate heat. Survivalists who build shelters can also apply this principle. Using mixed textures, burlap over tarp, grass woven into snow or sand-coloured coverings, mimics the natural light-scattering effect that fooled early Cold War reconnaissance optics. It's not about hiding in plain sight, it's about breaking the rhythm that the human brain expects to see. If you're testing camouflage in the field, well, do what Soviet researchers did. Move 50 to 100 meters away from your setup, take a look from multiple angles, and make a note of where light betrays edges or surfaces. Adjust texture, not just color. That's how soldiers trained with KLMK, through practical, field-based observation, rather than relying solely on lab theory. After the fall of the Soviet Union, NATO researchers finally gained access to once classified gear and honestly were stunned by how far ahead the KLMK pattern had been. Its principles directly influenced later designs, including Russia's Berezka pattern, Germany's Flektarn, and even aspects of US Marpat and Cadpat in the early 2000s. The underlying idea, using fine-scale contrast disruption and light-diffusing fabric, has since become standard in modern military textile engineering. Even, you know, civilian outdoor manufacturers quietly adopted similar weaving methods for heat-regulating and anti-glare garments. In short, the Cold War's secret camouflage didn't just hide soldiers, it changed the science of concealment. Its impact reached from classified Soviet labs to today's commercial gear shelves. For decades, the KLMK camouflage remained hidden not just from enemies, but from history itself, a rare case where cloth and light became tools of strategy. It's a testament to how deeply the Cold War pushed human ingenuity into every corner of technology, even down to the fibres soldiers wore on their backs. And for anyone interested in survival, fieldcraft or history, the lesson is clear. The best camouflage doesn't just mimic nature. 
It uses physics, observation and simplicity to vanish within it. If you enjoyed uncovering this forgotten chapter of Cold War innovation, subscribe to In the Beginning for more deep explorations into the technologies, tactics and survival methods that shape the modern world. Share this with a fellow history or survival enthusiast. Because, honestly, the secrets that once protected soldiers can still teach us how to endure, adapt and disappear when it matters most.